All right, uh, welcome to today's tutorial in Maya. Check this out. I've set up a little scene here where I've used um, instancing. Um, basically, it's just replacing a particle with a um, geometrical object. In this case, it's a, a torus. So, um, nothing too complex. Uh, this is a pretty simple process, but you can see the possibilities of this. It's uh, like a swarm of bees or some sort of creature that's uh, swarming. Um, and this is just a small object. Um, I've, uh, you can make any kind of geometry you want and basically do the same thing. So let's do a quick scene breakdown. Um, as you'll notice, I have a curve that I built, um, just a simple CV curve. Um, you can go ahead and build a curve, any kind of curve you want, and um, we'll, you can use that. Any kind of curve will work. So anyway, you'll notice too that there are some various circles here or, um, you know, like holes. And basically the swarms are coming in through these holes and the larger they get, the more you know room they have to expand. So I'm going to kind of do a uh, 3D kind of look at this view. And as you can see, um, here's the curve shape that I've used, uh, which is right here. That's our shape. And um, that's basically what's happening in this scene right here is I've attached that shape and it's flowing along this curve. And we do this by being in our dynamics menu set and using what's known as a curve flow. Now the curve flow is really cool, so we won't, um, I'm, I'm not gonna do anything quite yet, so let's just look at the scene a little more. You'll notice that um, you can vary the sizes on these, which is really cool. So I'm gonna show you the process of doing this and uh, how to get to where we're at here. So let's just play this and you can see where they're coming out here and I set the rate of um, flow a little heavier uh, I kinda started slow move heavy and then uh, keyframed it to move a little slower uh, toward the end of the animation which you'll notice I've got about 400 frames here so uh, just something to be aware of but the concept is cool this is what we're after is the concept so let's uh, start with a new scene I'm going to come over here and um, I'm basically going to come to a recent file. You can create a new scene um, right there. I've already got one set up a little bit for a pre-start. So I'm going to go to my, uh, my tutorial one there and I'll go ahead and save those. And no, this is the wrong one. This is uh, tutorial two. I'm going to come back down here and open up the right one. Ah. There I am, start. Okay, so here we go. I've started with my curve, and that's basically about it. The only other thing I have happening in this scene is one light, an ambient light, and I've assigned it this color. So that'll just give the particles a little bit of, um, a little bit of color. So I'm gonna assume that you know how to make a curve. So just create any type of curve. It could be a CV curve. Um, it could be an EP curve. It doesn't matter. Just a curve. And let's start our animation out with 400 frames. So there we go. All right. Now, um, what I want to do is I might come back to my home view here and create a NURBS. Um, uh, we'll just do the torus. Uh, and I'll just sort of drag on the grid. And boom, there it is. Let's go to shaded mode. Now, on this torus, I want to make it a particle size. So if you go to your NURBS Torus 1 tab, just set the scale at like 0.25 on X, Y, and Z. And that'll give us a really small little particle down here. And that's cool. It's kind of what we want. So I'm going to move this, uh, this curve into position now. I'm going to maybe bring it back here. I'll bring it back here a little bit, wherever. It doesn't really matter. Um, just put your curve somewhere and there you go. So now we have our elements created for the scene that we need. Um, I have this curve selected and while we have this selected we might as well go up and add that effect to it which is create curve flow. Now I'm gonna go ahead and want to hit my options box and let's give it a name. I'm gonna just call this donut stream. Alright so There we go, spell correctly all the time. So let's name it Donut Stream. And you'll see where I've got eight as sub as segments and then sub segments at four, that's cool. Set your emission rate to about 100, a random motion speed of about 
Uh, particle lifespan, let's look at this, 0.50, or I mean 5.0, and a goal weight of 1. Make sure your goal weight is set to 1. And that's really kind of what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Create. And in a couple of seconds, boom, you'll see that your curve shows up here with some things attached to it. It's exactly what we want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's just zoom in a little on that. And there it is. Okay, so I'm going to move my little tiny torus down here out of the way. I'll just get that and move it out of the way. Now, let's take a look at what happened here. You can see where on this um, curve flow, uh, Maya attached some locators. Those are our radiuses that we want to work with. And if we look by default, you'll see some particles kind of cruising through there. They're just little tiny circles. Well, that's cool and everything, but we really want to change that. And we'll change that first. So let's go back to the beginning of the animation. And um, actually, let's, let's come in a little bit into the animation. And I'm going to zoom in here and maybe click on one of these particles. And as you can see, um, it, it sort of, you know, grabbed that where it's, it, it, you know, the end of the particle stream. I'm going to go ahead and, and maybe let it flow a little more here. Okay, so now it's all the way through. You can see where the size of the box is increased. Well, you know, that's, that's the full bounding area of this curve and all these little particles that are flowing through it. So that's cool. You'll also notice that we have Donut Stream Particle in the tab when this is selected right here. Um, I'm going to try and get that back on. Um, we'll select the particles here. So we also have the particle shape. All right. So there's two different elements going on. And, you know, you're going to have some things that you're going to want to look at in each of these. Um, and we'll go through those in, in a little bit. So just to be aware, um, those are our elements. And now, as you can see, let's look at these radiuses and, and sort of um, try and figure out what they do. If I were to just um, click on one of them, I'm going to choose that one, so to speak. And I'm going to go to my scale tool and let's scale it up a little bit. All right. And let's go back to the beginning of the animation. And you'll see where they have a much wider radius to get through before they go into the other the other ones. Okay, well that's cool. Um, let's replace these now with this torus. I'm going to go ahead and click on my torus down here, and maybe maybe just grab up my choose tool, grab the torus. I want to look at the outliner at this point, and I want to see this donut stream. Okay, because what we're going to do is we're going to attach this donut uh, to the particles. So a couple of ways to do that. Um, this one might be the easiest. Make sure that you have your particles selected. So in this case, it's my donut stream. And um, let's take this torus. But we want the order that you connect them is, is um, important. So we want to choose our torus first. And then I'm going to shift click on my donut stream. And there it is. OK. So now what we have to do is come over to particles and we have to go to our instancer replacement. And you can go ahead and click on that options box. And basically we, we see that the donut stream is here and it's going to basically be replaced by our, um, by our torus. So with any luck of the draw, I'll hit create. And now I have our donuts. <laughs> okay. So just something to be aware of at the moment, and I'm going to move my outliner out of the way. Let's take a look at this. So I'm going to rewind the animation, and we should see donuts cruising through there. Sure enough, there's a ton of little donuts, and there they go. All right, that's cool. So we want to keep our object here um, because it's basically referencing. Um, the instancer is referencing all this. So for the moment, let's move him out of the way. I'm kind of move him back here and get it back there and you can always turn off visibility on that object um, if you're doing an animation this is just something to be aware of so you don't see it in the scene or you don't have to keep dealing with it out here so cool now what I want to do is I want to look at a couple of things um, I've got I've got good spread right here but I've got a lot of these coming out okay 
I, I may not want a hundred to come out to uh, begin with. So if I come over here, I could maybe choose my donut stream and um, you know look at a couple of the uh, different things. Um, if I have my donut stream there, I can come over here and look at attributes that I can keyframe. And um, you know, in this case, I've got an emission rate of 100. So I may want to switch it over to say 50. Okay, and I'm just going to click there. We'll rewind to the beginning of the animation. Let me move the outliner out, and we'll notice that you know there's a few less coming through there. So let's just sort of decrease that size again, and um, we'll set our initial emission rate to 25. All right, that's cool. So let's rewind the animation, play, and now we have a few less coming through, and that's what we want. So let's concentrate on some of these other things over here. Maybe we could choose this locator right here and give it a little bit more scale. We'll scale that one up quite a bit. All right, so they'll actually come out of here and they'll be constricted at this point. Let's give it a little bit more room near the emitter and then let's make them, you know, sort of come down into this one right here and then uh, we'll sort of constrict their movement through here and then we'll open it back up by just clicking on there. Make sure your scale tool is, is chose and uh, we'll just select on these little little guys down here you can see where I've got them sort of selected if I can click on that one just right I'll bring this one up and then they'll get really small toward the end alright so now I'm click anywhere outside of here grab your choose tool maybe maybe come around here to a better view and now let's play the animation so now they start out and you can see where they get smaller And I'll tell you what, we'll do that. I'm going to turn on my lights at this point. And on this light, I might come over here and give it a little bit more light just so I can see things better. Uh, we'll bring the, the intensity up a little bit there. All right, so you can see that's how you do it. Um, it's not all that complex. And uh, you can play around with these all you want. Um, basically creating a swarm but it's the concept that we're after here uh, just remember that you can choose any of these and change their scale and you can uh, you can make donuts fly around in space <laughs> okay so um, there you go oh remember these keyframe uh, these are attributes are keyframeable too so let's say I come back here and let me grab in my outliner I'll grab my donut stream and I'll switch over here into the keyable attributes and let's say for example I want to start my emission rates out and keyframe those to get heavier as it goes along well what I can do is I can take my emission rate from say like uh, 5 right here and you'll notice that I'm set at the very first frame of the animation I'm gonna go ahead and hit S on the keyboard set a keyframe and then maybe move ahead and add a whole bunch more so I could add and maybe up it to 50 by there and um, press S on the keyboard that'll set your keyframe and then maybe by this point we want a hundred coming out okay so I'll click in our emission rate and click in um, 100 and uh, there we go and I'll put a keyframe right here S on the keyboard and now let's just sort of decrease those from 100 back down to say say five uh, we'll go extreme here and I'll press S on my keyboard um, excuse me press S on the keyboard now I have a keyframe down here for five and it tapers off so let's take a look at the animation now and here we go so there it is you'll notice they come out slowly at the beginning a little faster spewing out and now they're going to decrease to to a lower rate over time so that was my keyframes down here so just something really cool um, you know be aware of the fact that uh, you can do all sorts of animating with these outside of this and um, there you go make some flying donuts <laughs> okay read a book and have a great day and thanks for watching